and welcome to a new weekly reading vlog. Today is Tuesday, April 27th. It is almost noon. I just filmed a video, which I had to film three times because my camera wouldn't stop stopping recording. Like it, it stopped recording mid-sentence and I didn't realize. It took me probably two hours to film my wrap-up, so watch it when it comes out because your girl is tired. I have no saliva or energy left, but because I have my ring light and I look kind of nice, I thought, let's start this vlog. So let's start this vlog. This week is my last week before I start work full time, which Lord save me, I don't think I can do this, but I have a lot of books to finish. I mentioned them in my wrap up, but I do want to finish them before May because I have a lot of pre-orders and stuff I want to do in May. And we're talking like a lot of books. So let's chat. The first book I want to finish is Listen to Your Heart by Casey West, which I'm listening to on audio. This is my fourth or fifth reread, I can't remember. It's my favorite YA book. This is about a main character named Kate who is taking a podcasting class with her friend. She ends up being the podcast host. She's kind of not super social, very much like me, loves to spend her time on the lake, and so it's hard for her to deal with all of the things she needs to do and I love this. I have the audiobook now so I'm listening to this while I do things around the house and I want to work on my planners as well so I might listen to some of this today. Again this is kind of a casual easy thing to listen to because I know the story by heart now but I love it so much. So then I have three physical books that I need to get to. I don't know I might do a 24 hour readathon to help me out here because this is a little ridiculous. The first one being The Inheritance Game by Jennifer Lynn Jesus, I can't talk. The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is a YA mystery, which is kind of like uh, knife, Knives Out? Yeah. And it follows a main character who inherits a 46.2 billion dollars from a man she doesn't know. The only catch is she needs to live in his house for one year. There's like everyone in there that wants to kind of have her killed because they thought they were getting the inheritance. Um, four young boys her, around her age and there's like a treasure hunt. It's very weird. I am loving it. I love Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Uh, this one I'm 160 pages in so I should be able to get through this very quickly because it is so fast paced and I'm loving it. We also have The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. This is on my list of 20 books to read in 2021. I'm 51% of the way through this one. I don't think it needs much of an introduction. This is a fantasy novel with a caseworker who goes to investigate magical children that are supposedly dangerous and falls in love with the man who runs the orphanage. It was like everything Booktube talked about last year. This was, this was it. So. I want to finish that to knock that off my challenge. And the last book I still am reading is Capturing the Devil by Karen Maniscalco, which was the last book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. <sighs> I'm out of breath. I'm still reading this because I don't want the story to end. Stalking Jack the Ripper in the series is my favorite series of all time. I love Audrey Rose and Thomas. The, le the level of romance in here, astronomical. I love it. It makes my heart happy. I'm 130 pages in. Yeah. And loving it but I need to finish it so I don't know how this will be possible or if it is possible but I'm gonna try my dang hardest and yes welcome to the vlog welcome to me being all over the place and tired of filming because that did not go the way I wanted it to but yes sir I'm gonna go have lunch now talk to you guys when I have some reading updates Wednesday. I know my hair is braided. I felt like it fit the vibe of my dress which you can't really see but I'm here to update you guys 
on my reading. Also, please don't judge the braids. I don't know how I feel about them, but we're just going to move on and talk about the reading because I do need to clean my apartment, so I thought I'd update you guys beforehand. So yesterday, while I was doing some planner stuff, I did listen to more of Listen to Your Heart, the audiobook, and I got to page 172. So I think I listened to the equivalent of like 100 or 120 pages. I do have like two hours left on the audiobook when I'm listening to it at 1.7 times speed. So obviously I would have no issues finishing this before the end of the week. This morning I did make some calculations that I think I need to read just a little bit under 1000 pages before the end of Saturday to reach my goal. We'll see if it happens. Um, I'm crossing my fingers it is. But yes, as I said, this is like my fourth or fifth reread. I don't have much to say about this one aside from the fact that I love it. It's very comforting. I don't need to uh, fully concentrate on it because I do know the story like by heart by now. But it's still very nice to be able to listen to it. Um, I didn't make any progress in Capturing the Devil or The House in the Cerulean Sea yet today. I do plan on reading at least 50 pages of each of these if I can. However, when I woke up this morning, I did sit down and read physically more of The Inherited Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And I am now on page 277 or chapter 67, which means I read, I was on page 160, so I read like almost 120 pages of this in one sitting. I am loving this. This is taking a lot of twists and turns I did not anticipate. I don't know who I'm supposed to trust in this, even if I can trust anyone. I do like the dynamic between our main character Avery and two of the Hawthorne brothers, Grayson and Jameson. I don't know what will happen. It's kind of like a will she fall in love with either of them? Are they genuine about their actions or are they just trying to get to the end of this huge game they're in? One of the other brothers has warned our main character of their intentions and it's all just kind of unraveling. A lot of things have happened to our main character in the last 120 pages I've read and I really love how fast paced it is. I kept myself like I kept telling myself I'll read one more chapter and then the chapter was like two pages and then I would read another one which I like this a lot more which I like this a lot more than the style of The House in the Cerulean Sea because this is a lot slower in its recounting of the story whereas this one is just kind of like feeding you information after information and that way you're fully hooked like if I was going to make a video of books to read to get you out of a reading slump this is it, sis. Look no further. This. So I am making some decent progress. I did, however, get a package, which I think this is a pre-order that's supposed to be out next week. So let's, let's open her up. It is. And it is, oh, this is cute. Ten Truths and a Dare by Ashley Elston. This is on my May TBR. It is a May 4th release, so I guess I got this early. How long is this? This looks short. Yeah, this is not even 300 pages. And this follows uh, one of the cousins, I believe. Her name is Olivia. Yeah, Olivia, who we saw in Ten Blind Dates, which is another book by Ashley Elston. I like that they all have the number 10 in them. Um, essentially, in Ten Blind Dates, we see a huge family. That book is set around Christmas time, and this one is following one of the cousins, and it's going to tie all the family together in some way or another. I'm not sure yet, but very excited for this. And as I mentioned, it is on my May TBR, so if by the luck of gods I finish all of these before the end of the weekend, I can pick this up and start it earlier in May, which is nice. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I'm sorry guys, we were rudely interrupted by my boyfriend coming home from his haircut, which was very much needed, and he brought salad over for our dinner tonight. I was... Jesus. I was talking about this, and yeah, it will be nice to have this like a little bit earlier than May 4th because that means I can get a head start. Not that I don't have other books already planned for my TBR, but 
very excited for this. I wish this was Sunkissed. No shade to this book, but if I had Sunkissed early, I would probably die of joy, especially this week, considering it's like my last week off before work. But it is fine. Still very excited. I love the cover for this. I really, really do. And the like kind of like matte feeling to it. Love this. So yay for early book mail. And yay to all the pages I still need to read. I'm loving how my tabbing is coming along with all of these. Love it for me. So yes, I will go probably watch some videos while I do my cleaning and update you guys when I do have some more reading updates, hopefully from these two. Pray for me. Come on. Hello everyone, we're trying a new angle that is still Tuesday. It's almost 7 p.m. I painted my nails, which feels nice. I feel like I haven't done this in a while. I also found my... Oh, hello! Ugh, we had a friend come join us. But yes, I also found a daisy necklace I owned and it matches my dress, so... My sister also told me over FaceTime that I look like Anne of Green Gables today. I don't know what to make of that information, but apparently I look like Anne of Green Gables. Reading update. If I'm not mistaken, I... Yeah, I updated you guys on my reading on the Inheritance Games. And I made a lot more progress in the House in the Cerulean Sea. I thought to myself at first, try to get through 50 pages. I don't know if I mentioned this. Like, my goal was to get 50 pages through the House in the Cerulean Sea. And then pick up 50 pages of Capturing the Devil. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that. However, I started reading this and then things started to unravel and I am now on page 328. I'm a little bit over 80% of the book. I don't rem- I think I- yeah, I was on page 202 when I started this, so I read around 120-ish pages almost 130 pages um, in one sitting and I am loving this a lot more than I was in the beginning. It's kind of started to pick up the pace uh, emotionally and as well as plot wise. We discovered a lot of things along the way, a lot of like dots connected and we saw a lot more of our main character and his feelings and how that affected his relationships with the children as well as the mad like the one who in care of the orphanage. I'm losing all my words. However, it is very angsty in the sense that the man in charge of the orphanage, who is called, why am I blanking on his name? Arthur, has been hinting clues of how he feels, but there's been a lot of other reveals and they haven't really had any emotional, like, moments, like, together, except a little bit of hand holding or whatever. And there's not that much left of the book. There's like 70 pages max left of the book. So I don't know how we're going to get from this to like their end ship together. And whether or not that will be realistic given the timeline. I am hoping I really, really love this. I do really love the values and everything this stands for. So it's, it's getting better. I was a little bit disappointed at first, but... I kind of see where everybody says it's like emotional and mushy-gushy. I, I can see that from now. But that means I have yet to make more progress in Capturing the Devil. This is probably what's going to be read after my bath. I will go in the bath and keep like the end of these books for tomorrow. If I don't end up reading, if I don't end up finishing them tomorrow, I might do a 24-hour readathon for a separate vlog from like Friday to Saturday or something like that, but I don't know. I might do it even if I do finish these books, so maybe I could finish this as well because April has been a very good reading month and I would like to like up my stats if at all possible, but yeah. That's pretty much all I have to say, so I will try to get maybe 50 more pages of this read so I can have maybe like a kickstart on everything. 
and get closer to the halfway point in capturing the devil. I feel like I'm all over the place. I don't usually juggle so many reads so it's a little hard to handle but I am enjoying the process so yeah as I said it's almost seven I'm gonna go in the bath probably have a little snack or something to eat afterwards and read more of capturing the devil but I am making great progress today very proud of myself. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It's me again. Ignore the yelling. My boyfriend's playing video games. I have mixed emotions here and I thought I would vent. It is still Wednesday. I still look like a mess and we're rolling with it. First off, I read 110 pages of Capturing the Devil. I stopped at part two because my heart is broken. This book went a million different directions, none of which I thought they would go, and my heart is broken. I have a feeling of queasiness that has not left ever since this book started going downhill, and like, honestly, a way I never predicted the story would go. Like, I was shocked. I wanted to bawl my eyes out. Audrey Rose is hurting, my babies are hurting, and I am too. I am not okay. I knew reading this book something terrible would happen. Ladies and gentlemen, it has happened. I don't know how I feel about this. All I know is it needs to get better, and obviously it will get better, but I don't know how. How they can arrange the situations that are happening, and I have a feeling that the murders in this are gonna get a lot creepier, and I don't know what to do with myself, so I thought it would best, like, be best to just drop it for this evening and keep going tomorrow but I am doing incredibly well with my reading so I'm very happy about that but also very random I was on Twitter which if you don't follow me on Twitter you definitely should shameless plug all my info is in the description and I follow Peyton from Peyton Reads and I love her channel she is hilarious and so cute and she like tweeted about this um, read along idea for a good girl's guide to murder which i read the first book because of her and her vlogs and how much she loved them and i was like you know what she's a million times bigger than i am on youtube but i'm still gonna shoot my shot and say like if you haven't found any co-host i'd be down it's like a over the span of three months because the third book is coming out like september 28th i think i'm in a group chat with five other people now and Honestly, I'm just gonna shoot my shot and like try to talk to these people and see if anything comes of this But just the fact that like I'm in the same group chat as Peyton Excuse me Who is she? I feel like I'm an imposter But I loved the first book and I just think it would be so fun to be able to talk to other people about it and have live shows about it and Yeah I don't know what to do with myself. I'm a mess. I don't even know if anything will really come of it. And she's like responding to my message. That's it. That, that's all. That's that's the tea. I, I, I'm gonna go die now. <laughs> Just wanted to show I love this skirt and I paired it with this top and I think I look cute. This is a horrible angle, horrible lighting. Hello.
it is Thursday. Let me move you and we can talk about the books. Hello everyone. I thought I was recording. I wasn't recording. This is like the fifth time this week. It is Thursday. I literally just have to refilm an entire update. Update about what I mentioned yesterday. It really does seem like we're going to have a read-along for a Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which I'm super hyped about. I know more people wanted to join and because we're already six, it's a lot with the logistics, so I don't know what's going to happen with that. Either way, very happy. Second order of business, let me... I have been following a lot of romance booktubers who talk about Hello Lovely and I've wanted to try their stuff for a long time. It's like a clothing. They have like book boxes with clothes. They sell clothes and other little like accessories and I've been wanting to try their stuff for a long time and today was their semi-annual semi sale for the first time. I was able to get a hoodie and I'm so excited because everything was selling out so quick and I'm really happy I got on my game. I've been looking at their website for such a long time and it was the time to snag something and if I like them I think during closer to the fall like the end of summer I might buy a few of their pieces. Um, I did use Jess at Peace of Books code which is like piece 15 and what was fun is that it applied to the already discounted items so the hoodie was like $24.99 which is a really great price and I love supporting businesses like this one and I believe it's fully woman owned which is even better so very excited for that I'm very like in a good mood good things are happening I got my stuff sorted out for my second dose of my vaccine because I'm technically getting vaccinated on a day I work and I was like how is that gonna work but I called my boss figured everything out and Monday I will be fully vaccinated I'm scared of the side effects, but whatever. But I did read three things. Okay, sorry, um, we were interrupted, but moving on to the things I read. The first thing I'll talk briefly about, but it is Here at Dawn by Bo Taplin, which is a collection of poetry and prose. I gave this five out of five stars. If you've been to my channel before, you know I love poetry. I especially love Bo Taplin, Atticus, and R.H. Sin. I, I own a lot of their poetry. And I read this over the course of April as I kind of was feeling it and and yeah, it obviously it is more of a personal taste thing than an objective thing. Um, but I enjoyed it. Five out of five stars. I don't have much else to say. And then I moved on to finishing The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. As I mentioned, I had like a hundred pages left of this. This ended up giving a four out of five stars on my Copile rating, which I use. And the Copile thing was created by GI Book Roast, which I can leave in the description for anyone who hasn't heard about it yet, but the ending really made me emotional. It was adorable. I really loved the resolution and kind of where the book went. I think that the choices made by the author and the um, feelings you get and how much you realize at the end that you do appreciate the characters is like my favorite thing about this book and how you really want everyone just to be okay. And I really liked the commentary it had, the choices our main character made, and just his connection to the children and how it grew. It made me really emotional. I think that the first half of this was a little bit slower and I think that's kind of what knocked off the star for me. It was a little hard to get into. The chapters were very long. Like 40 page chapters for me is way too long. Long and it doesn't entice you to read but the second part of it was really more about the characters and their emotional connection and everything they did during the time Linus was at the orphanage and I really enjoyed that so yes four out of five stars I really do understand all the hype around it like I'm not bringing anything new to the conversation but I do understand why people love it so much especially if people only read um very dark fantasy. It could definitely be seen as something more light and fluffy and romantic and I feel like it's a book for everyone whether you like fantasy or romance or whatever I feel like you could get something out of this and yes I really I also really enjoy the D dynamic of what a caseworker is supposed to do and how objective you're supposed to be and how that can be both a good thing and a bad thing so Really enjoyed that. And then I finished off The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which also got a four stars, but a very high four. I love this. I think that the last like 90 pages I had to read brought a lot of different resolutions and new conflicts and concerns to the book. You get to like learn about 
the reasoning behind why Avery is getting all of this money but you also get new questions and there's a lot of things going on between Avery and all of the brothers and amongst the brothers and um I don't know I was gonna say something I think it might be yeah it's not said in the blurb so I'm just going to not say anything else because I don't want to spoil it but something you learn about something in the book and how that kind of influenced the dynamic between all of the characters and then you kind of figure out what exactly happened. I really love this. It was really fast paced. The chapters were short and there's also always something to grip your attention and I just think it was wonderful. I love Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This did not take the top spot. The Natural series is still up there for me but I still really love this and I will be picking up the Hawthorne Legacy in September, I believe, when it comes out. I do think I like like the style of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder more because you can find the clues with the character, whereas in this one it was a little bit harder to like guess where it was going because just the way it was made, in my opinion. But yes, those are all the updates I have for you. I will be reading more of Capturing the Devil. I think my goal is to read 100 pages later today and the rest tomorrow and try to somehow squish in this today and tomorrow as well via audiobook. Hello everyone, happy Friday. I'm trying to find angles that work. It's raining outside, there's no sunshine, so we're gonna work with this angle again. Today will be the last day of this reading vlog because I manifested something into existence. Without joking, um, I know I mentioned in this vlog how I might want to do like a 24 hour readathon, and then I went on Twitter. I'll, I think I have a screenshot, I'll screenshot it here. And Jade decided to do a random readathon 48 hour edition going from May 1st to May 2nd, which is exactly kind of what I was in the mood for. And now knowing that more people are low key participating just solidified that, so I will have a different vlog during that time. So reading updates. I can't believe I think this week I'll have managed pretty much all of my goals. Yesterday while I dried my hair after I like had a self-care moment I finished listening to Listen to Your Heart by Casey West and I did check on Goodreads. This was my fourth reread. My first time reading this was in 2018 and I've read it every year ever since. So Yay for me. I've been reading this book for four years now. This is definitely one of my most reread books. I love the audiobook for this. If you're looking for an audiobook, I'm pretty sure it's on Scribd and it's just really fun and light, easy to listen to at like two times speed if it's like something you're trying to get into. Like if you're trying to get into audiobooks, I highly recommend this one. I really love the narrator. I believe she's called Nora Hunter or something of the sorts. I don't have much to say about this. Obviously 5 out of 5 stars. I love the story. I love everything about it. I mean character is funny, the, the best friend, all of the dynamics and the lake. It was just nice and comforting and it felt very good. I had like two hours left to listen and yesterday drying my hair takes a really long time. Even with a really good hair dryer and I was procrastinating a bit. So ended up finishing this and this morning I and last night I kept reading Capturing the Devil. Did I read it? No, I read this morning, not last night, and I'm now on page 310, which means I only have like 140 pages of this left. I don't know where this is going. We're learning a lot of different things, but a lot of different things are being tangled together, and one of the main storylines and how that affected Audrey Rosen Thomas isn't like touched upon for the last like 50 pages even though there are like indirect impacts I don't know how that's going to be solved if it's going to be solved I'm crossing my fingers if not I'm probably gonna give this one star um I'm absolutely loving it I love the setting in America and their main characters I think they were in New York at first and then they moved into Chicago were they in New York where did the boat they were in Chicago. I don't know. I don't remember where the boat landed in America for some reason. We have seen characters from Hunting Prince Dracula as well as Escaping from Houdini that have come back um, and like made small appearances, some more significant than others as of now, but I'm loving this honestly. It is such a fun time and I'm 
I'm very happy. I will be finishing this today. Obviously 140 pages isn't that much. I'm gonna try to read in increments of 50 and I think that should get me there pretty quickly which would mean that before this log ends I will have attained all of my goals for the week which is a lot more than I expected. I didn't think I was going to be able to finish these four books. Obviously I haven't read them in their entirety but still very proud. And that would make my April month one of the best reading wise that I've ever had so yay for me. However even more excitingly two of my most anticipated releases of the year or ever really are here. Let's unbox them. I'm gonna make sure I film before. So my camera battery is flashing so we're going to do this quickly and without too much fangirling. This is the reason I'm so excited for my 48 hour readathon. Y'all I can't believe it's here. <sighs> oh my I want to cry. <sighs> I'm literally shaking. I'm so excited. <laughs> and my camera's kind of crooked and I don't even care. Sunkissed by Casey West. A look at this spine. And this cover. And the back cover. I don't know if it has like a lot of them or have something on the oh yes it does the naked hardback has sunglasses love that for us I'm gonna be reading this this weekend this comes out on May 4th and manifested it being here beforehand I love that for me so I have a themed reading vlog idea which you'll have to tune in for my readathon for but oh my Jesus Lord I can't believe it. And the other one, why does this look so tiny? Is this... I'm confused. I thought this would be bigger and now I don't know if it's so... Okay, it is the right thing. Why is this so... I'm shook if... Why is this so small? Today, Tomorrow, and Always by Tessa Bailey, which is Tucker's story, the third book, uh, the third and final book in the Phenomenal Fate series. The first one is Reborn Yesterday. Loved it. It's a paranormal romance with vampires. This is like 270 pages. The other books are like twice its size. This is tiny. Well, anyways, it's here. I'm excited. Love the cover. I'm gonna go scream into the void and take Instagram pictures of this. Hello, welcome to my kitchen and the end of this vlog. I will have included my reaction to finishing Capturing the Devil before this. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it made you laugh because I'm certainly not in the mood to laugh. It's the end of an era, truthfully. I have not gotten over this book and I finished it a couple hours ago. I've been trying to clear my head, it changed my mind. I put this book off for two years because I knew exactly how I was going to feel and it's 10 times worse than I expected. I thought that the last 90 pages of this book were going to rip my heart apart. I had chills, I felt sweaty, I sobbed my life away, I just could not stop 
freaking out at this book because these characters, they mean a lot to me. I've been reading this series for years now and the emotional connection that I feel to the characters and to the books is one thing, but when I say it's the end of an era, I do quite mean that literally Stalking Jack the Ripper and the series has been here, why am I getting emo, has been here pretty much since the beginning of my channel and I feel like I found and lost and found myself over and over again throughout the years but one of the main constants constant things in my life has been this series and I feel like we all have anchors that help us in life and this series definitely is and so seeing the struggles of our main characters was just a lot for me like I connect to them to another level these are my favorite people and I just wanted my little babies to be okay I don't want to get into any spoilers but there was just so many things happening that I never quite quite was sure whether or not we were going to get some semblance of a happy ever after and my heart just broke and I could not stop crying and I've been a mess ever since. I've been looking at fan art and clothes and merch and I found this t-shirt. If I think of it, I'll insert a photo here which I'm getting for myself 100%. I will for sure be buying that t-shirt and wearing it proudly. And just I want I'm just so thankful that I found this series when I did and I did definitely find this series because of booktube and it's definitely one of the best things that's happened to me because of booktube and I just am so glad that I have these books in my life and my collection and that I can reread them over and over again. I think this one will always be one of the hardest ones to read but I will cherish it in my life forever. I know this sounds insane but I think we all have that one book or like series that means the world to us as readers. This is definitely mine. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea but I love Audrey Rose and Thomas and that'll never change. Um, so yes I did accomplish all of my goals ladies and gentlemen. Did you believe I could? Because I sure as hell did not believe I had it in me this week. This this is what I completed this week. Look at her go. I am now at a total of 32 books for the year, hoping to get to my 52 before the mid-year mark. So again, don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss my journey towards my reading goals. But oh my god, I feel very emo. So as a recap, 5 out of 5 stars, obviously. 5 out of 5 stars, duh. These are literally two of my all-time favorites. And then a 4 stars for House in the Civilian Sea, 4 stars for the Inheritance Games, and a 5 out of 5 stars for Here at Dawn. And that is it for my video. I'm gonna rest a little bit before I start Raidathon. And hopefully I catch you guys in that video. As always, thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Let me know down below if you've ever felt so emotional finishing a series. And yeah, goodbye guys. Happy reading.